OK, I'm going to remind you what we've said about percentages. Any word that has these four letters C-E-N-T in the middle, cent, has usually got something to do with a hundred, hasn't it? A Roman centurion in charge of a hundred soldiers, a century, a hundred years, a hundred cents in a euro or a dollar. So it's always got something to do with a hundred, and a percentage is in fact a fra the same thing as a fraction where the bottom number, the denominator, is a hundred. So for example, five over a hundred, or five out of a hundred, can be directly turned into a percentage because the bottom number here is a hundred. Five out of a hundred can be written as five followed by this percent sign. Okay. Uh, some percentages you're probably already familiar with. For example, we know that a half is often converted into 50%. So if you said that half of the people um, in a room were taller than five foot, then you could say 50% of the people in the room were taller than five foot. Well, how is it exactly that half can be converted to 50%? Well, a half, if we work out its equivalent fraction in 50th gear, if you like, we know we can multiply both the top and the bottom by the same number to get its equivalent fraction. So 1 times 50 is 50 over the top. And the bottom number is 2 times 50. 2 times 50 is 100. So because 1 half is an equivalent fraction to 50 hundredths, we can easily see now why a half is the same as 50%. Let's take a different example. Suppose we had 3 out of 20 people um, knew how to juggle. Uh, what's that as a percentage? Well, again, we've got to find the number that's the equivalent fraction that goes over 100. What have you got to get to 20 to get to 100? You've got to multiply 20 by 5. So. 20 times 5 gives us the bottom number, 100. 3 times 5 gives us 15 for the new top number. So 3 out of 20 is equivalent to 15 out of 100. So we could have written down that 15% of people could juggle from that particular group. OK? How do you convert a fraction into a percentage? Let me just move the paper up a little bit. If you can't um, find an exact multiplier to get into 100. For example, if I wanted to work out the equivalent of what 1 in 6 people was as a percentage, 1 out of 6, we can't actually get a multiple of 6 that exactly hits 100. So we've got to take a slightly different tactic here. We can't multiply up directly. The tactic is to first turn into a decimal and then go from the decimal to the percentages. So how do we convert 1 6 into a decimal? Well, we can say it's the same as 1 divided by 6. So we top all the fraction over. Remember to get it the right way around. We can say 1 divided by 6. And again, we're probably going to add a few decimal points here, aren't we? Because it's less than 1, so we're going to need those points. How many 6s? Oh, I almost forgot to put the decimal point directly above. Start again. How many 6s in 1? None. So that 1 gets carried over here to 10. How many 6s in 10? Once 6 is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 4 left over. So let's put 4 there for 40. How many 6s in 40? Well, 6, 6 is a 36. 37, 38, 39, 40, 4 left over. Hey, look, it looks like the same pattern's going to repeat. If we get 4 left over, we're going to have to put a 6 and then get another 4. So it's going to be 6, 6, 6, keeping on going. 
So I suppose we just put, could put a recurring dot above that 6, couldn't we? So that's the first stage. 1 6 as a decimal is 0 0.1666 recurring. How do we turn that into a percent? Well, that's actually pretty simple because we just need to multiply it by 100 and that will give us the percentage number. To multiply any decimal by 100, you have to move the decimal point two places to the right. One place to the right would be times 10. Two places is by 100. Three places would be times 1,000 and so on. So if I move this one, two decimal places to the right, I get 16.6% recurring. I said it the wrong way around. 16.6 .6 recurring percent. So that's how you can do it with a fraction whose bottom number doesn't immediately go into 100, or if you just don't know whether it does or doesn't, you can do it this way and it'll still work out right. OK, let's carry on. Let's just suppose I asked um, 10 people whether they liked Marmite or not. Um, so I'm going to get answers yes and no, aren't I? And of the 10 people I asked whether they liked Marmite, 3 said yes and 7 said no. How? What percentage of people said yes? Well, 3 out of 10 said yes. We've got to convert that into a percentage, so we've got to find out what it is over 100. 10 does go into 100, so we can multiply it up directly. How many 10s in 100? 10 10s are 100. So that's our multiplier. 10 10s are 100. 3 10s are 30. So we can say that 30% of people we asked said that they did like Marmite. What about the people that said no? Well, 7 out of the 10 said no. Can you still see that in the camera? Yes, you can, I think, can't you? 7 out of 10 people said that they didn't like Marmite. So what's that over 100? Again, if we just multiply by 10, 10 10s are 100. 7 10s are 70. So 70% 70 of people said they did not like Marmite. We could have done it another way, couldn't we? Instead of working out the fraction again, we could have said, well, we asked 10 people, and the 7 people that said no must have been the total 10 minus the 3 people that said yes. 10 minus 3 is 7. We could have done the same thing with the percentages as well, couldn't we? We could have said, well, 100 people we asked in all, and of those 100, then 30 would have said yes that they did. So if we take 30 away from 100, we'll find the total number of people that would have said no. And 100 minus 30 is 70. So if 30% said yes, then 70% must have said no. Because in general, all the groups added together would need to make up 100%. So you can easily take things away from 100 to find out what percentage is left.